The treatment of relapsed refractory large cell lymphoma continues to be an area of significant challenge. Uh, historically, patients with relapsed or refractory large cell lymphoma have had quite poor outcomes, and understanding that the prognosis in this situation can be uh, quite poor, and this despite uh, use of all available standard of care options. In the clinical approach to a patient with relapsed or refractory large cell lymphoma, the first question that we tend to ask as lymphoma physicians is whether or not the patient could be eligible for high-dose therapy with autologous stem cell rescue, or uh, also known as an autotransplant, should the patient uh, go on to have an adequate response to second-line treatment. This splitting of patients into transplant eligible and ineligible stratifies the approach that we generally recommend in trying to treat the relapse disease. Patients who may be eligible for a transplant tend to be treated with more aggressive chemoimmunotherapy programs, typically what we would call platinum-based programs. Here we're thinking of regimens such as RICE, RDHAP, RDHAX, and the like. But these regimens all share the characteristic of containing a platinum-based molecule, whether it's cisplatin, carboplatin, or oxaliplatin, combined with um, other cytotoxic and typically rituximab as well. Patients receiving platinum-based second-line therapy who have chemosensitive disease and uh, demonstrate an adequate response, ideally a complete response by PET criteria, typically will then go on to receive consolidative autotransplant with a beam-based regimen with or without radiation therapy if relapse were localized. For patients who have transplant ineligible disease, meaning that they have relapsed or refractory large cell lymphoma, but the patient is not felt to be appropriate for a consolidative autotransplant, even were they to achieve a good response to second-line treatment, here the therapeutic options are a little bit less well-defined, and there's a greater variety or heterogeneity of what's actually used in routine clinical practice. That being said, in America, the majority of patients will go on to receive one of uh, a number of regimens, either uh, rituximab, gemcitabine, and oxaliplatin, or gemox, bendamustine and rituximab, or BR, RICE chemotherapy remains an option as well, although not typically used by me or at my center for patients who have uh, relapse disease but who are transplant ineligible, nonetheless remains a popular choice in terms of community-based therapy. The challenge here is that outcomes with all of these regimens, R, GEMOX, BR, and the like, are quite poor. Overall response rates are low, progression-free survival is brief and these patients continue to have a very poor outcome and very poor prognosis despite such treatment. For patients who are transplant ineligible, who are in need of second-line therapy, there is this uh, list of regimens from which we draw regimens such as rituximab, gemcitabine, and oxaliplatin, or gemox, bendamustine and rituximab, or BR, rice chemotherapy, other regimens that are sometimes used in select subgroups of patients. Patients with non-germinal center biology may benefit from targeted therapeutics such as ibrutinib or lenalidomide, typically combined with rituximab as well. The challenge here is that we know that such treatments are being given with palliative intent and not with curative intent, and we understand that response rates are low and duration of response is brief um, across the spectrum of therapeutic choices available for such patients. Overall, in America, the majority of patients are transplant ineligible. Uh, this makes sense because diffuse large piece cell lymphoma is a disease more common among older patients. Um, and the majority of patients are either too old or have comorbidities that interfere with the safe delivery of high-dose therapy or won't respond adequately to second-line therapy and will be disqualified on the basis of a lack of appropriate chemosensitivity.